architect Divya Chakravarti. She completed her undergraduate studies from SRM University and she went on to pursue her masters in historic preservation and urbanism and study of the built environment from the University of California, Los Angeles. She went on to work for the Department of Planning and Preservation for the city of Pasadena, California. She also did a brief stint of work for Historic Scotland, Edinburgh, UK. She also worked on conservation projects like Kalsa Mahal, Gokhale Hall in Chennai and Marimala Pa Educational Trust in Mysore. She is currently working as a director of Samrakshan Heritage Consultancy. She is also a co-founder of the Artisan Reprisal of Traditional Materials, Method and Technology. She goes on to conduct workshops to revive traditional and lost methods of construction. Welcome to the UGC lecture series for Bachelors of Architecture. The subject we are discussing is environmental science. The topic we are delving into is environmental pollution. In this lecture, we'll be looking into solid waste management. If you go about seeing the source of our main urban waste, primary is domestic waste, which is food waste, clothes. Commercial waste is waste, paper, cans, bottles. Sources, other sources with respect to urban scenario is construction waste like wood, concrete. Then you have biomedical waste from hospitals, needles, syringes, anatomical waste. If what happens if you don't manage your waste? You need to throw, if you mix everything and throw it away in one bag, what happens is it causes diseases. It has certain poisonous products which when released can actually harm animals who are consuming the garbage and that could add on to the littering part of it, cause pollution and because it's completely mixed, the compost part of it, the organic part of it, the biodegradable, non-biodegradable, medical waste, it all gets mixed and because of that, very small percentage of the material can be reused or recovered and because of using syringes, needles and glass, broken materials are there, it causes a lot of injuries to the people who are handling the garbage. So managing our waste doesn't mean just what happens after it's collected. The whole process of collection, dumping, how are we collecting it, where are we keeping it, who is going to collect it from one spot to another spot, what kind of waste, how are we segregating our waste. All of this comes under solid waste management. The different kinds of waste we are talking about are in solid form you have domestic, commercial and industrial waste, plastics, bottles, cans, paper, scrap iron and other trash. Liquid waste are like domestic washing like the detergents from washing machine, wastewater from ponds, manufacturing industries and other sources. Biodegradable like paper, wood, fruits and vegetables non-biodegradable which cannot be further degraded or decomposed like plastics, bottles, old machines, styrofoam containers, computer parts, CDs, cans, all of this comes under non-biodegradable. Hazardous waste is substances unsafe to use commercially, industrially, agriculturally or economically and have any of the following properties. Ignitability that is it can catch fire, Corrosivity, it can actually corrode the materials around it. Reactivity, it will be a catalyst or it can cause reactions like with other garbage. Toxicity, such that it can make something poisonous like water, soil, whatever it comes in contact with. Non-hazardous waste are substances which are safe to use commercially, industrially, agriculturally or economically and do not have any of those properties which we just discussed. These usually create disposal problems. How do we go about classification of waste according to their origin and type? We have municipal solid waste which include household garbage, rubbish, construction and packaging materials, trade refuses which are managed by any kind of municipality. Biomedical waste is solid or liquid waste including containers, products generated during diagnosis, treatment, research activities of medical sciences. Industrial waste encompasses liquid and solid waste that are generated by manufacturing and processing units of various industries like chemical, petroleum, coal, 
metal, gas, sanitary, paper, etc. Agricultural waste is generated from farming activities. These are mostly biodegradable, but they could be toxic if the fertilizers and pesticides are going to be used in abundance. E-waste is a newly emerging waste which is causing a lot of problems which is any modern establishment which is basically discarded electrical or electronic devices. Some electronic scrap components such as CRTs, wires, circuits, mobiles, computers, CDs, previously it was floppy disks, all of it is considered e-waste. We saw household generating waste which could be both organic as well as inorganic, industries, agricultural waste, fisheries waste which is in the rivers and seas. Sources of waste if you look at it, paper and paper board takes the maximum of nearly 30 percent and that is the primary kind of waste. But if you don't and paper if you look at it is a recyclable material and once it's recycled it can be reused as well. Plastic takes about 13 percent. Plastic also can be recycled to a certain extent. But what happens when waste is not managed well? Once paper gets in contact with vegetable garbage and other kinds of waste like broken glass, it cannot be processed. It is equivalent to being non-biodegradable or non-reusable. So it is very important that we save 30 percent of this garbage which means we can actually reuse it efficiently. 13% of plastics can also be reused. Metals 9% can be converted as scrap. Wood also is biodegradable. And we have yard trimmings which is basically plant waste, vegetable waste from markets and everything. That again is completely biodegradable. So if you look at the blue, red, green, these three are completely biodegradable which is nearly 30 percent of paper and paper related. Food scraps is nearly 13 percent. Yard trimmings another 13 percent. So this itself if we actually made sure our garbage was managed well, segregated at the collection point itself, we will have to deal only with a small percentage of non-biodegradable materials. But if we do not segregate it, then all of this is complete waste and none of it can be reused. If you look at the structure of solid waste, you have refuse and trash. So trash is bulky waste like TV, refrigerator, goods, broken furniture, mattresses, pillows, all of that. Refuse, you have two types, garbage, which is vegetables, meats, food waste, other readily degradable organic material, usually from the kitchens. Rubbish is non-degradable like glass, rubber gloves, metal, plastic, non-metal sets, all of that. Then you have these are slowly degradable, especially paper, wood products, textiles. Even though they are considered degradable, it takes a long period of time. So it is obviously better to segregate the completely wet garbage from the dry garbage. If you look at solid waste in India, we have 7.2 million tons of just hazardous waste. One square kilometer of additional landfill area is added every year. 1,600 crore rupees for treatment and disposal of these wastes is spent. In addition to this, industries discharge about 150 million tons of high volume, low hazard waste every year, which is mostly dumped on open low-lying land areas. How is the growth pattern of solid waste in India? Waste is obviously growing by leaps and bounds and this is in direct proportion to population, urban population especially. As and when the population is growing tremendously, waste generation will also grow tremendously. Between 1981 and 91, population of Mumbai has grown from 8.2 million to 12.3 million. During the same period, municipal solid waste has grown from 3,200 tons to 5,355 tons, a whopping increase of nearly 7%. Cities like Bangalore produce about 2,000 tons of waste per annum. Waste collection is a very low for all Indian cities, primarily by city municipality. They are the main collectors of waste within our country. 
there is no gradation of waste product that is there is no segregation like biodegradable glasses polythene bags paper ba paper bags all of this is not segregated everything is put together dumps these waste to the outskirts of the cities local raddi walas or kabadi walas collect these small iron pieces using magnets then that is recycled in scrap form then they collect the glass bottles which again is recycled to a certain extent and then they collect the paper for recycling but all of this percentage of reutilization is very small because number 1 the iron particles could be rusted it will lead to a lot of infectious diseases second glass bottles as and when it's thrown from one place to another it breaks and again that could lead to a lot of harmful acts like cutting and then again certain other diseases because of this and when you think of paper for recycling paper again gets mixed with all of these materials and 100% is obviously not going to be reused or recycled how has actually solid waste affected us in recent years in mumbai in the uh, year 2005 it it was pretty much clogged the, all of the sewage lines due to large number of plastic bags this again causes a lot of chaos and confusion when there is heavy torrential rains and when there is huge rains like these all of these plastic bags block the drains and the water gets flooded onto the roads and the streets of the city there was this blast in bhushan steel factory in noida which was caused due to imported scrap from iran reduction in the number of migratory birds due to consumption of contaminated foods animals dying on streets and farmlands due to consumption of plastic bags which blocks the food movement in their stomach so another main problem with collection of mixed goods in one bag is all the animals and scavengers have to tear apart the plastic to reach the food that they can smell so what happens is plastic is obviously consumed by these animals and along with this sometimes metal pieces sharp broken glass all of this is also consumed tearing the intestines and causing permanent damage and death if you see the health impacts of solid waste exposure to hazardous waste can affect human health children being more vulnerable to these pollutants improperly operated incineration plants cause air pollution and improperly managed and designed landfills attract all types of insects and spread diseases direct handling of solid waste results in chronic diseases with the waste workers that is people who work in these areas they are again not given any protective devices they are just collecting all the garbage with bare feet and bare hands which causes a lot of health issues if you look at landfill it is the most traditional method of waste disposal waste is directly dumped into disused quarries mining voids or borrow pits dispose waste is compacted and covered with soil gases generated by decomposing waste materials are often burnt to generate power it is generally used for domestic waste the advantages of a landfill is obviously it's cheap waste disposal option for the local council and municipalities jobs are getting created for local people lots of different types of waste can be disposed of by landfill in comparison to other waste disposal methods the gases given off by the landfill site can be collected and used for generating power disadvantages is it is definitely going to look ugly because it, and as and when the population increases and the growth of the city happens this landfill also increases dangerous gases are given off that cause local air pollution and contribute to global warming local streams could become polluted with toxins seeping through the ground from the landfill site once the site has been filled it might not be able to be used for any kind of redevelopment as it becomes too polluted so once the levels of toxicity reaches a particular level it cannot be covered and reused as a site for construction as it will be deemed hazardous and unsafe if you look at the land required for disposal of solid waste and this is the emission of methane from landfill in 97 it was negligible and in 2047 the level it is required this is in 
kilometer square in square kilometers required is 1400 square kilometers for disposal of solid waste and because of that what has happened with the emission of poisonous methane gas in 97 it was between 5 and 10 million tons per year and now it has in 2047 it is expected to reach a whopping 40. So, you can see there has been a steady increase and they are projecting an increase because they are not coming up with better options to offer municipalities. Now, if you look at process of solid waste management, obviously first part is generation of the solid waste that is homes, industries, whatever the area, then the waste is collected, then it is transported, then it needs to be stored. This stored portion is again a dicey situation, then the waste is segregated, then it is separated for recycling and then finally disposal methods are chosen based on what is left behind. So, you can see there is a tedious process that is gone, but the segregation of waste should ideally happen before the collection of the waste at the very source and the collection of the waste should be done in numerous channels according to the type of waste that is generated. Then the transportation storage will all become much easier. Then directly from the generation point, one transportation can go to recycling and one more set of transportation can go to alternate disposal methods depending on the material that is coming out. Typical disposal methods are landfill, incineration, composting. The steps involved is here solid waste management, reduce, reuse and recycle before destruction and safe storage of waste, discarding waste. So, these two first let us reduce the, uh, the generation of waste. Okay, now how much over it can be reduced let us reduce and the next important step is how do we go about discarding this waste. Sanitary landfill is in a this is a kind of a alternate landfill system where you have 80 centimeter thick refuse covered with selected earth fill of 20 centimeter thickness. So, after around 2 to 3 years solid volume shrinks by about 25 to 30 percent and then this land is used for parks, roads and small buildings. A typical example of this is done in Koturpuram where an old landfill has now been made into a public park for the use of the general public. The most common and cheapest method of waste disposal is sanitary landfills which is invariably employed in Indian cities. But here the key word is sanitary landfill which is done in the method described. If it is just going to be an open land where everything is going to be dumped that is not going to be considered a sanitary landfill but just landfill. Landfill structure is built either into the ground or on the ground into which the waste is dumped. The method involves spreading the solid waste on the ground, compacting it and then covering it with soil at suitable intervals. So, essentially what we are trying to do is whatever garbage is going to be decomposed, we will provide the bacteria and whatever environment that is required for the decomposition process to fasten and get faster. Energy consumption or energy generation from landfills, landfills can harness energy too. Bacterial decomposition inside landfills produce methane which is the main component of natural gas. How do you go about collecting this landfill gas? So, landfills can actually start making extra money, fuel is then made available and methane which is a greenhouse gas is collected and prevented from reaching the atmosphere and affecting the nearby surroundings. Now, what is the advantage of a sanitary landfill? It is simple and economical segregation is not required, landfill areas can be reclaimed and used for other purposes, converts low lying marshy wasteland into useful areas, natural resources are returned to the soil and recycled. Disadvantages, a large area is required since land is available away from town, transportation cost is heavy, bad odors if landfills are not properly managed. The landfilled areas will be the sources of mosquitoes, flies and hence insecticides and pesticides are to be applied at regular intervals. It causes fire hazards due to the formation of methane in wet weather. So, it will start like forest fire, it can just self combust 
and create a lot of issues. Incineration is a waste treatment process that involves the combustion of solid waste at 1000 degrees Celsius. Waste materials are converted into ash, flue gas and heat. This ash is mostly formed by the inorganic constituents of the waste and gases due to the organic waste. The heat generated by incineration is then used to generate electric power. So the steam is basically used to propel the turbines and that turbine instead produces electricity. So what are the advantages of an incinerating method? Minimum of land is needed compared to the landfill method. The weight of the waste is reduced by about 25% of the initial value. No risk of polluting local streams and groundwaters as in the case of landfills. Incineration plants can be located close to residential areas and the gases are used to generate power. What are the disadvantages? Completely expensive, requires skilled labor, that chemicals that would be released into the air could be, could be strong pollutants and may destroy the ozone layer. That's a huge disadvantage and there's obviously a high energy requirement and the balance of energy requirement versus energy production needn't always be met. Composting. In this method, bulk organic waste is converted into a fertilizing manure by biological action. The separated compostable waste is dumped in an underground earthen trenches in layers of 1.5 meters and this is finally covered with the earth of about 20 centimeters and left over for decomposition. How does composting actually work? When you have the influx of oxygen with feedstock and manure compost coming out as a byproduct and the other byproducts are water, heat and carbon dioxide and other such gases. So what is the input? Raw manure, bedding, feed waste, nutrients, carbon, nitrogen, water, soil and the exit or the output is mature compost which is a uniform mixture of decomposed organic matter, minerals, microorganisms with reduced volume, weight and moisture content and this is considered a very fertile manure which can be used for agricultural and gardening purposes. Composting actually sometimes certain microorganisms are introduced for active decomposting. So that needs to be added on. So within two to three days of biological action starts, the organic matter starts being destroyed and lots of heat is liberated as a byproduct of this process. Finally, the refuse is converted to powdery brown colored odorless mass known as hummus and has a fertilizing value which can be used for agricultural fields. The compost contains a lot of nitrogen essential for plant growth apart from phosphates and other minerals. World Health Organization WHO has set up a compost plant in New Delhi in 1981 with a capacity to handle 90 to 100 tons of waste every day. The prepared compost was then supplied to nurseries, kitchen gardens and other horticultural departments. The composting technology is widely used in many developing countries. What to compost and what not to? So this for this method segregation of garbage is very crucial. All food waste which includes meat and dairy, compostable products from the Hark industry. These are decomposable plastics in the sense these are a grade from decomposing plastics. They are types of styrofoam and plastic induced things that completely degenerate and decompose. Napkins and paper towels, tea bags, wooden stirrers, yard trimmings, leaves from garden, all of that can be composed. Single use servings that cannot be put in, recyclable items like metal, plastic, paper, coffee cups and lids from commercial establishments, soup lids from the hawk. Types of composting, you have aerobic composting, anaerobic composting and vermicomposting. When the manure is added to the soil, it increases water retention and the ion exchange capacity of the soil. A number of industrial solid waste can also be treated by composting. It can be made as manure and that can be sold 
which reduces the cost of disposing of waste. Recycling has to occur simultaneously. Disadvantages, the non-consumables have to be disposed separately in the sense the segregation of garbage is very important. Use of compost has not yet caught up with farmers and obviously has no assured market for the manure. How to go about treating hazardous waste? Waste that poses a potential danger to human health. Four criteria are ignitability, that is things that can catch fire, corrosivity that can corrode metals, reactivity substances that are chemically unstable and react with other chemicals in dangerous ways, toxicity substances that are known to be harmful to human health. There are many types of hazardous waste. You have heavy metals like mercury, lead, chromium, arsenic which is from industry, mining and consumer product industries. Organic compounds like synthetic pesticides, petroleum products, rubber, solvents, resin, preservatives. The surface impoundments as hazardous waste, it is really only for temporary storage and is not considered ideal. Waste may essentially overflow, blow out or vaporize or leak. So all of this is not considered an ideal situation. It is only a temporary relief to store it. How do you go about preventive measures of how do you go about making sure solid waste management of hazardous waste especially is going to be done in a proper channeled manner. First is systematic solid waste management involving public in plans for waste treatment and disposal. You need to educate people on different ways of handling their waste, household level of proper segregation of waste, recycling and reusability, process and product substitution, example use paper bags instead of plastic bags, garbage collection according to a schedule that is set. So awareness, education and segregation of garbage is the first step and it can actually be started at every household level. That is only very important. If garbage is not segregated at the very source, then having any of these management plans is not going to cause any effect in a long run. Compaction, the waste is compacted or compressed. It also breaks up large or fragile items of waste. This process is conspicuous in the feed at the back end of many garbage collection vehicles. Deposit refuse at the bottom of the slope for best compaction and control of blowing litter. Pyrolysis is defined as thermal degradation of waste in the absence of air to produce char. Pyrolysis oil and syngas etc. Example is the conversion of wood to charcoal. Also it is defined as destructive distillation of waste in the absence of oxygen. External heat or source of heat is employed in this process. The three important R's reduce, reuse and recycle. You can actually help by pre-cycling one third of all garbage is packaging. Buy things that are in packages that can be recycled or made of recyclable materials. When you buy something small, do not use a plastic bag. How do you go about reusing? Many things can be reused before they are thrown out. Use coffee cans and cottage cheese containers for storage. Use bags of paper or used envelopes for jotting notes. Put leftovers in reusable containers instead of using wraps and foil. Use old clothes as rags for cleaning instead of paper towels. Have a garage sale, donate clothes, books and toys that are not used anymore. Recycling is the most crucial. Every year we use about 25 billion plastic containers, 30 billion bottles and jars and 65 billion aluminium cans, 100 billion pounds of paper. So all of these are recyclable materials. So if all of this is properly collected, segregated and channelized, we can make a huge saving, not only in terms of money, but also in terms of saving the environment. So this is the waste reduction hierarchy. The most favored option is reduce, lowering the amount of waste produced. Then we have reuse, using materials repeatedly. Then we have recycle, which is using materials to make new products. Recovery, recovering energy from the waste that is generated. Landfill, safe disposal of waste to landfill. This is considered the least favored option. 
at the end of this lecture, we have looked into the details of solid waste management, the different methods of collection, segregation and disposal. At the end of this lecture, we should be able to answer the following questions. What are the types of solid waste generated? Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using landfill as a method of disposal of waste. What is composting? Discuss the hierarchy of solid waste disposal. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you.